I have never done a list this big. 20 monthly dividend stocks, all ranked to help you find the best dividend stocks to buy and put cash in your pocket every single month. I'll be ranking these stocks on dividend yield, dividend consistency and growth, and then total return on investment. I'm gonna show you how I ranked these stocks, but let's get on to our first monthly payer. With SL Green Realty Corporation, that's ticker SLG, you see it has a dividend yield of 8% here on any of these stocks. You can go to the profile tab, see what kind of stock it is. It is a REIT, a real estate investment trust office space that holds those office space mostly in Manhattan. We can look here on the historical data tab for each stock, see its dividend payments. I've adjusted these for the time period of five years, show dividends only, and then click apply. And you can see the dividend history here if you scroll down. And for SL Green, it has been very bad, all the way down from 86 cents a share of dividends back there in 2018, all the way down to 27 cents a share just recently for this monthly dividend stock. I'll be grading each of these factors on an A through F basis. You can see this dividend yield here for SL Green. Just 8.2% gives it a C rating. So you can imagine how high some of these dividend yields go if 8% is a C grade here. Just three dividend cuts over the last five years isn't bad, but isn't great either. Cutting, th cutting the dividend three times there in the past five years gives it a grade of C. That dividend has, has slumped 20% annualized over the last five years. I'm gonna show you how I found all of these here in a little bit, but the dividend has been cut an average of 20% 20, 20 each year over the last five years. That is a grade rating of F, very important for our rankings here. And then total return, if you had invested in this stock five years ago, you would have lost about 9.3% a year over the last five years. That is why it's a return graded F, and that is why it is the worst performing stock of our 20 monthly dividend stocks. Now, SLG has not only suffered from just that overall real estate sell-off on higher interest rates, okay, so interest rates have increased the fastest pace of in more than 40 years over the last year. That has hit real estate valuations as well as the operational profitability for a lot of real estate firms and brought all of real estate down 25% last year. But SL Green is also focused on that office property in just one area, Manhattan. That is really seen the worst of the post-pandemic transition. Maybe next to San Francisco, there will be a point, of course, where we see fire sell prices on this office space. And the stock could be a good investment, but it's just still hard to see when that time will come. So I would stick with some of these other real estate stocks on our list, other property types, and, and definitely a more diverse regional footprint than just Manhattan. Next up here, Permian Basin Royalty Trust, ticker PBT. You can see it has a dividend here of 3.96%. This is gonna be one of the lower ones on our list. Here in the dividends historical information, we can scroll down here to see it was offering a 5.5% dividend back there five years ago in 2018 and has regularly increased and cut its dividends. This is typical of royalty trusts where their dividend, their cash flow depends completely on oil prices, how much they're collecting from those trust assets. So it has cut the uh, dividend it is down to about two and a half cents per share, but it was up as high as four, 4.4 4 cents per, per share here just in May of 2023. So these royalty trusts, not quite the, uh, not quite the consistency in dividend. It's going to be important if you want that consistency in dividend, but it is going to be much more volatile than a lot of these other monthly dividend stocks. We see in our dividend ranking here, that dividend yield of 3.8%, 3.9% gives it a grade of D. 23 dividend cuts over the last five years. Again, a lot of dividend increases as well. That dividend is gonna be extremely volatile, but the consistency grade is gonna be an F here. With so many cuts, so many increases, you are just not gonna see a consistent dividend per share amount from this stock. That dividend growth as of now has fallen 14.6% over annualized over the last five years. So again, each year about 15% gets wiped out there. That's a growth rate of D. Total return, you actually would have made a lot of money on this stock though. So this is something that you have to consider. Something I'll talk about in a minute, what the importance is for you as an investor of that dividend consistency, even if you're making a, a very high total return. Total return over the last five years for Permian Basin Royalty, obviously benefiting from those high oil prices. 30% a year, that is a return grade of A for this stock. So obviously PBT has benefited from that post-pandemic rebound in oil prices, getting a lot of money for those trust assets each month and distributing that to investors as well as a, a increasing share price. The assets are older than most other royalty trusts. So you, you might wanna look at some other royalty trusts PBT is gonna see its uh, cash flows declining because of that age of these, of these trust assets and the cash flow is gonna be declining over a period. Our first mortgage REIT here, Orchid Island Capital. You can see here a dividend yield of 20%, very high dividend yield. 
But again, if we look at the dividend information, we are gonna see a dividend that has been cut consistently down from 40 cents a share back in 2018, has been cut to 16 cents per share of dividend just here in August of 2023. So that high, almost 21% dividend yield does give it an A rating for the yield. If it can hold on to that, that would be great. But four dividend cuts over the last five years gives it a C rating. That's a negative 16.7% annualized decline in its dividend. So comparing that dividend five years ago against the current dividend, it has declined 16% annualized each year. That is an F rating. That is why a lot of these, these first companies are... are are ranking so poorly in our list among 20, 20 monthly dividend stocks because they have just fallen so much in that dividend that dividend amount. Total return here, if you had invested in Orchid Capital, Orchid Island Capital five years ago, you'd have lost 8.7% a year over those five years. So definitely uh, one you wanna watch out for, an F rating in this stock. Now, a big part of this Orchid Island Capital has suffered along with a lot of the other M REITs in this list. This mortgage REITs, as that mortgage market just gets turned upside down again, the fastest interest rate increase in over 40 years. That said, there are other M REITs like AGNC that have been more consistent with their dividends. They're better up on this list. I'm going to highlight that in a little bit. Haven't seen their stock prices fall quite as badly. So you got to kind of separate these mortgage REITs out. Orchid Island at Capital has suffered from the M REIT, uh, from the mortgage disaster, but also some management problems there that is causing it to causing it to perform so poorly against even other M REITs. You know I love dividend stocks, and we'll get right back to our list. But if you want to see the stocks I'm buying for the next 30 years, my forever stocks, look for the link I'll leave in the description below. It's a free report I created with The Motley Fool, my forever stocks, the stocks I'm buying for 10x returns. Click through that link. You're going to see that first stock immediately. Then you're going to get the next four by email. The report is totally free and some of my favorite stocks, so check that out. Our next stock, another mortgage REIT here, Armor Residential REIT, ticker ARR. Now it says this stock has a dividend yield of 98%. That is just a problem with the share split coming up. It's gonna split one for five, effective August 2nd. It recently announced that cash dividend of 40 cents a month. So what, what Yahoo Finance is doing, it's taking that 40 cents times 12 for that annual dividend amount and then dividing by $4.89. That is not what you're gonna be getting uh, because that share price is gonna change when that share split goes through. It is actually, since it's a one for five stock split, that is actually like an 8% or eight cents per share dividend. We're gonna look on the historical data and see that that doesn't change from where it was. So 0.08 per share times 12, that is actually 96 cents per share you're gonna be getting on dividends per year on that company divided by the current share price, that is still a very solid 19.6% dividend yield. And if we look at the dividend history on this stock, eight cents a share, that is what it was paying for. So it is not really changing its dividend per share amount. It's just that it is splitting its shares one for five. So that uh, that dividend is going up, but you're still getting essentially the same thing. We can see that it has dropped the dividend from 19 cents a share there in 2018, has cut it consistently down to eight cents a share now. And so with that almost 20% dividend yield, it does get an A grade rating. It has cut the dividend three times, which isn't as bad as some of these other stocks here, but it is a C grade rating for the number of dividend cuts over the last five years. A negative 15.9, negative 16% dividend growth over that five years. So it has cut the, cut the dividend by an annualized rate of 16% a year over five years. That is an, another F grade rating for dividend growth here and a negative 15% uh, negative, negative 15 total return on the shares over the last five years. Now, how I, I'll show you how I figured these, uh, these total returns and all of these here in a little bit, but even with the dividend, even with that 20% annualized annual dividend, you would have lost 15% a year over the last five years. That is an F grade rating and makes this the fourth worst stock on our list. So here we see Armor as a mortgage REIT is in the same boat as Orchid, as that M REIT, but I think both will survive and post good returns in the future once the mortgage market returns, uh, probably starting with rate cuts next year. I do like ARR here slightly better, but would still prefer maybe AGNC, some of those other mortgage REITs that we'll get to later on in our list. Next monthly dividend stock on our list, Dynex Capital, ticker DX. You can see here it has a 12% dividend yield. 
Scrolling down on the dividend history, you can see it has been cut pretty significantly. But one thing I do like about DX, Dynex Capital here, is while it cut pretty aggressively there over the years from 2018 through 2020, it has not cut since June of 2020. It has been able to hold that dividend consistently, but it has cut from 54 cents there in 2018 down to 13 cents a share here in 2023. So you see here with that 12.2% dividend yield, it does get a B grade rating for that dividend yield. Three cuts there, three dividend cuts there over the last five years, although they were all in those earlier years. So a little bit better dividend consistency now in these more, more recent years, but still a grade of C there. It has, it has dropped its dividend by 25% annualized over that period from that uh, 50 cents a share all the way down to 13 cents a share. That's why it has a F grade rating here but it does have a positive return, a positive return of 5.4% a year if you had invested in these shares five years ago. So that gives it at least a C grade rating here for Dynex Capital. So, yep, another M rate of these types of companies are the highest yielding uh, REITs out there and usually set up these monthly dividend payers, where, whereas a lot of those traditional REITs, so a traditional real estate investment trust, are, are those quarterly dividend payers. It takes us back to the idea that if you're investing in these monthly dividend stocks, you, you really need to diversify across all the different types of businesses out there, like the, the MREITs, the business development corporations, those BDCs, and even MLPs, those master limited partnerships that are the oil companies. So you really don't see your portfolio fall apart when one specific type of business, like these MREITs, falls apart. Our next monthly dividend stock, our sixth on the list here, Ellington Residential Mortgage REIT, ticker EARN. I swear, folks, there are others, other stocks here on the list besides these M REITs, but this Ellington Mortgage Real Estate uh, Residential Mortgage REIT here, ticker EARN, it's a 15% dividend yield. Here in the dividend history, we can see that typical of mortgage REITs, that dividend cut over the years from 2018, dividend share of 37 cents per share dividend paid out there all the way down to just eight cents a share recently on this stock so we can see almost a 15 percent dividend yield does give it a b rating as far as dividend yield but four dividend cuts lands it firmly in c territory negative 26 percent dividend growth over the last five years on an annualized basis there so 26% down each year, an F there, and just 1.5% total return over the last five years. So this is still a positive return if you had invested over the last five years. Gives it a C rating, but not the, not the best we'll see for these mortgage REITs on this list. So again, folks, I swear there are more to this list than just those mortgage REITs, but it gives you a sense of how badly hit the mortgage and, and that MREIT market has been over the last few years with just these companies all bunched up here in the worst monthly dividend stock performance. Again, the market will rebound when those rates start coming down and people are able to afford their mortgages, but you want to be watching for the companies that are able to manage these bad times just as well as the good. So I would still avoid some of these worst hit, these worst performing mortgage rates and, and look forward to the, uh, the other ones on the list that have performed better even over the last couple of years. The Whitestone REIT, ticker WSR, you're gonna get a 4.8% dividend yield from this stock. This is not a mortgage REIT. This is a traditional real estate investment trust owning retail properties, but it has also been pretty aggressive at cutting the dividend. We can scroll down here, 2018, a dividend of nine and a half cents per share was aggressively cut there in 2020 into the pandemic to conserve that cash flow. Now it did increase its dividend rate in 2022 from 3.6 cents per share up to 4 cents a share. That's where it's at now. So a little bit more dividend stability and the consistency here over the last year. That dividend yield of just 4.9% gives it a D rating against these other 20 stocks. One dividend cut though, one dividend cut over the last five years gives it an A rating. So that consistency helps it up a little bit. The drop in the dividend from, uh, from 9 cents a share all the way down to 4 cents is about 14% dividend decline each year. So that's a D rating and you would have just broke even with the dividends in the stock over the last five years. So investing in 2018 in Whitestone, Whitestone REIT, ticker WSR, you would have broken even with the dividends when accounting for the dividends on this stock. That is a D rating. So yay, finally a stock that's not a mortgage REIT. Whitestone does own retail property, so a more traditional real estate investment trust that owns those properties. It's focused on those open air strip mall kind of properties, which haven't been quite as bad, as hard hit as the malls over the last decade, but all that retail property is really feeling that slow death against e-commerce. And that's why these, these shares have underperformed a lot of the other real estate investment trusts in the market over the last five years. 
Cross Timbers Royalty Trust. Now this isn't about timbers, uh, but this is actually another energy royalty trust. You see here it offers a 9.8% dividend yield. And you can see here in the dividend history that typical volatility in the royalty trusts where they pay out almost all their cash flows each month. That makes that volatility in dividends just highly dependent on whatever they collect, whatever the cash flows they collect from those royalty assets from month to month. You can see here back in 2018, it was paying out about 12 and a half cents per share of dividend. That got all the way up to, if we scroll up here, I imagine it's gonna be in the, in the later years when the oil really took off. 16 cents a share there in 2022, down to up to 19 cents a share here in July, but now down to 12.4% or 12.4 12 .4 cents per share here in August, 2023. So I think that dividend consistency is gonna hurt it here. We have a 10% yield, which gives it a C rating. 29 dividend cuts over the last five years though, that does hurt it. Again, I'm gonna explain why this might not be a factor for you as an investor later on if you don't care about that dividend consistency, that dividend price volatility up and down, then it might not matter quite as much because again, with 29 dividend cuts, you also have a lot of dividend increases over that period. Now, dividend growth over the last five years, this actually did decrease the dividend only slightly from the last five years, but I think it's really how you measure this on this. With so much dividend volatility, it's where really just how it falls where that, that first dividend was five years ago and the current dividend is now. So that's a growth of C, growth grade of C right now. You would have done pretty well though in shares of Cross Timbers Royalty over the last five years. You would have made 18% a year annualized. That is a return grade of A. So again, Cross Timbers has actually produced a really good overall return over the last five years, really helped by those surging oil prices. The big problem here is inconsistency in the dividend. So if that doesn't bother you, then this would be higher up on your list. We are just getting started on our list of monthly dividend stocks, but Nation, I do not want you investing in these just because you saw them here. Blindly following any YouTuber here on a stock is not a good investing strategy. That's why I created this quick five minute guide to stock analysis. In less time than it takes to say smash the like button, you'll know how to pick your own stocks and always know you're making the right investments. That quick start guide is totally free, just something I wanted to do for all you out there in the community. So look for that link in the video description below. Mesa Royalty Trust, another royalty trust here with an 11.24% dividend yield. And again, that typical volatility here in dividend payments, we can scroll down here, 8.7 cents per share dividend back in 2018. That made it all the way up to we can see here 11 cents a share. We can see here 11, 18 and a half cents just last year when oil prices were really surging. So 18 and a half cents per share dividend there in November of 2022, 23 cents here just earlier this year, but now down to just 4.1 cents per share dividend here in August, 2023. Here that 11.5% and a half percent dividend yield gives it a grade of B, 21 dividend cuts though over the last five years, a grade of F. Four, negative 14% dividend growth over the last five years. Again, that is just where, is, where the measurement started five years ago versus today, but with these dividend cuts and the volatility in the dividend, that's really about a, an even for dividend growth, but a grade of D here consisting on that five-year period. If you had invested in these, again, royalty trusts have really benefited from those surging oil prices over the last five years. You would have made 15.5% a year investing in the stock. That is a grade of A for total return. So again, a couple of things you need to understand about these royalty trusts, okay? They are very volatile along with oil prices. However, oil prices go is the way the stock price and the dividend is going to go. They have surged with oil prices over the last couple of years. That might not happen in the future, depending on where, where oil prices go. And that lack of dividend growth that we see here in the chart, maybe just more of a timing than anything. It just happened that this month, five years ago, was an especially good one, and, and last month was a bad one, then it looks like the dividend has fallen more, even though it's risen and fallen over that period. So Mesa has still produced a 15% total annual return, so still a good investment if you want to be in these royalty trusts. We are halfway through the list here of monthly dividend stocks with Ellington Financial, ticker EFC, and it's 13.5% dividend yield. Here, like the ones before it in the dividend history, we do see some volatility in dividends since 2018. Started out at 41 cents a share, but quickly cut it there in the next year in the 2019. But it has been fairly consistent since then. Cut it down to 15 cents a share there in 2020. Cut it a couple of more times, but it has increased since then over the last couple of years. It has held that dividend consistent at 15 cents a share since 2021. So much better dividend consistency over the last few years. 
Again, Ellington makes it 10th on our list, 13.7% dividend, gives it a grade rating of B, two dividend cuts over the last five years, uh, very good compared to some of these other uh, monthly dividend stocks we've seen, grade of B, there, though it is an 18% annualized dividend decline over those five years. That is a grade rating of F, but at 8.1% total return or annualized return over the last five years, that's pretty good as a grade of B and on that total return basis. So here with Ellington Financial, we get to those better performing M rates. Okay, so Ellington is a mortgage REIT. One of the ones I'd look for is for that eventual rebound rather than some of the other mortgage REITs that we saw lower on the list. Ellington has performed well over those five years, 8.1% annualized return over the last five years, much better than a lot of the mortgage REITs that have just fallen apart. Uh, Ellington Financial has been able to limit its dividend cuts and still produce that annual return versus losses of 8 and 15% a year on some of these others like Orchid and Arm. A popular monthly dividend stock on the list here, Gladstone Commercial Corporation, ticker G-O-O-D. It's going to have an 8.9% dividend yield. And one thing about Gladstone Commercial here, you can see in the dividend history, it had a dividend, a consistent dividend, 12.5 cents per share, all the way back to 2018. A very long time, very good dividend consistency versus a lot of those other traditional real estate investment trusts but it did cut just here in January of this year to conserve cash flow, cut that dividend down to 10 cents a share. So that did hurt good on our rankings. That's 9% dividend yield, gives it about a C rating. That one dividend cut still gives it an A grade rating, not the best on our list with zero dividend cuts, but did have one dividend cut there this year, negative 4.4% annualized growth in dividends. That is from that 12 and a half cents a share down to 10 cents a share now. Uh, so that does give it, uh, does knock it a little bit, that C rating there, but a 0.6% total or annualized return over the last five years. That is not great. Uh, good dividends on this stock, but the actual price return has been less than optimal. So Gladstone Commercial would likely be higher up on this list if not for that dividend cut earlier this year. That surprised everyone with this cut. This stock was extremely consistent before that. That's how bad these rising interest rates have been for real estate stocks, really the entire industry. This should be a good one for that rebound in real estate I'm expecting over the next few years as interest rates start coming down again. Number 12 on our list, we're getting into the top 10 monthly dividend stocks, EPR Properties, ticker EPR. You can see here it offers about a 7.5%, 7.6% dividend yield. You can see here in the dividend history, if you scroll down, started out at 36 cents a share there in 2018, increased it in 2019, increased it, we go, increased it further in 2020, but then had to cut in 2021. So the pandemic forced a lot of real estate investment trusts, a lot of real estate companies to conserve their cash flow. You see here cut from 38 cents a share down to 25 cents a share there in 2021. It has since increased it. So a little bit better dividend consistency and dividend growth here in this stock in EPR properties. That 7.5% dividend yield does give it a C rating. That's one dividend cut here over the last five years. And that good dividend consistency lately gives it an A rating there. That dividend has fallen by about 5% annually over the last five years compared to that five years ago period. That is a C rating. So it dings the stock a little bit. And the total return in this has not been great. If you would have invested in this stock in EPR properties in 2018, you would have lost about 3.6% a year even after accounting for that dividend yield. So we're starting to see a lot of those real estate investment trusts here, those traditional real estate companies that have been hit hard by rates, but not quite as bad as those mortgage REITs. Uh, EPR is a little odd here in that it focuses, its property focus on entertainment and leisure properties. Uh, those are things like le theaters, resorts, uh, theme parks. It's a very consumer spending driven play. And honestly, I've never been much for this, this type of property versus some of the other property type REITs that we're going to talk about. Lucky number 13, Agree Realty Corporation, ticker ADC. Going to be pay a 4.8% dividend yield here. If we look in the dividend history here, we see something similar to what we saw with that last dividend stock. We see a high dividend here, 54 cents per share back in 2018, running into problems there into the pandemic. Increased their dividend up to 60 cents a share, 62 cents a share here in December of 2020, but then had to cut to protect those cash flows, those cash flows dropping from the lockdowns, from the pandemic cut to 20 cents a share. It has since increased that consistently though, up to 24, 24.3 cents per share for this, uh, for this stock. So it has gone, to, gone back to increasing its dividend. That is a very good sign for dividend consistency. Here, ticker ADC with its 4.8% dividend yield, not very high on our list, only a grade rating of D, but only one dividend cut is a rating of A. So that helps support that low, little bit lower yield on our ranking. 
That said, it has decreased its dividend by about 10% annualized over that five years, just a factor of it starting so high in 2018 and then cutting it so low there through the pandemic. So a grade rating of D for its dividend growth. If you had invested in this stock about five years ago, though, you would have made almost 5% a year. So that is not great, but still fairly good compared to a lot of these other stocks. A grade rating of C on the return grade. ADC is another real estate company investing in retail properties. And while the company claims it's reimagining retail, the shares haven't done much since 2018. Along with that pain in interest rates, retail is just facing that retail versus e-commerce struggle that kind of puts a question mark here in the future for the stock. Apple Hospitality REIT, ticker APLE, not Apple Computers, Apple Hospitality REIT. It's gonna pay about a 6% dividend yield. Here in the dividend history, we can scroll down and we can see it was paying a 10 cents per share dividend back in 2018. And the same thing happened to a lot of other real estate companies. It had to cut there in 2021 to preserve those cash flows, build itself back up after the pandemic, a down to just one cents per share dividend, but has, had, has increased it regularly since then, 21, 22, here in 23, paying now eight cents per share dividend. So almost back up to that same dividend level, that 10 cents per share dividend it was paying five years ago. That 5.9% dividend yield gives it a C rating there for yield. Uh, just one dividend cut over the last five years gives it an A rating, so supporting the stock a little bit, though it is still slightly below that five years ago dividend, so negative dividend yield growth here over the last five years, a grade rating of C. That said, you would have made about 4.1% a year in the stock when accounting for dividends. That is a total return grade of C. And I always wonder how many investors think Apple hospitality has anything to do with Apple computers. It is a fairly big uh, player in those hotel properties though, with about 220 hotels in 37 states. That's across the Marriott, Hilton, and Hyatt brands. So it is a legit company on its own. There's next six, the top six monthly dividend payers on this list have an average yield of 7% and five have increased their dividends over the last five years. But first, I wanna show you how I ranked this list, how to find your own best monthly dividend stocks. Now, getting the dividend information was actually pretty easy online. I used Yahoo Finance, but this is on any investing platform. I first went to each dividend stock and copied down the dividend yield here on the first page. To find the number of dividend cuts, I went to this historical data tab, set the time period to five years, and then to show dividends only. I used five years here for all my research because with that longer time period, you get a sense of the consistency in that dividend payment and more important, the company's commitment to shareholder cash return. Scrolling through this page, I could see how many times the dividend has been cut. And it's important here to understand there are two strategies for dividend paying companies. Some pay out as much money as possible every month and nearly all of their earnings each month. That means dividends are gonna jump around more and you're gonna see more cuts versus companies that really try giving investors some consistency in cash flow. If you are depending on that cash flow, then obviously you want that consistency. If you're just looking for the highest possible payment though, then maybe it's not quite as important. For that dividend growth, I divided the most recent dividend payment by the first one listed here five years ago. For example, SL Green Realty's 27 cents per share dividend in August divided by the 86 cents dividend payment in September 2018. Now, since this is over five years, you tap this X to the Y button on the calculator and then 0.2 and then minus one to get an annualized number. I know that's a lot of math and probably only interesting to us numbers nerds like myself, but this is actually how you get that average annualized return for everything from return on sales growth, dividend growth, a lot of really important analysis for those longer term trends. Anyway, if we take 0.27, so that's 27 cents per share dividend, divided by 0.86, then to the power of 0.2 since it's five years, you get that negative 20.7% annual drop to the dividend. This process works the same whether it's a dividend cut or grew over the period. Now I wanna get back to our list of monthly dividend stocks. So I'm gonna show you later how I got that total return on investment plus how I graded each of these factors. But I wanna get your input on this as well. Which of these factors is most important for you in your own dividend stocks? So scroll down and let me know in the comments below whether it's dividend yield, growth in dividend, consistency, or even that total return, which is more important for you? We are into our top six monthly dividend stocks, LTC Properties, ticker LTC. You're gonna get about a 7.1% dividend yield here. If you scroll down in the dividend history, you see no dividend cuts. It started at 19 cents per share dividend here in 2018. It has been able to keep that consistently all the way up to the present, 19 cents per share dividend yield every single month. Now that dividend consistency is gonna help it. We got a 7.1% dividend yield here, gives it a C rating. Zero dividend cuts gives it an A rating. 
Uh, that is also zero dividend growth over the last five years. So that is only B. It hasn't cut the dividend, so that's always good. But you would have made zero in this stock over the last five years, even accounting for that dividend. So the stock price has come down a little bit. You would have an annualized return of zero in this stock. That gives it a D rating. So now LTC here is a senior living REIT. So it owns senior living assisted care facilities. These saw a lot of pain before the pandemic on just an overbuilding of these types of properties. Just started coming out of that when COVID hit. That knocked them down again, but it looks like these are finally improving and the industry has some long-term, good long-term demographics ahead of it. Here we are into the top five monthly dividend stocks, AGNC Investment Corporation, one of my favorite mortgage REITs here, a dividend yield of 14.6%. Here in the dividend history, we can see that it has cut a couple of times. Started in 2018 with a 18 cents per share dividend. It did cut it there in, in 2019. So the next year it cut it again down to 12 cents a share in 2020, but it has been able to keep that dividend consistent since 2020. So over the last three years, dividend has consistently stayed at 12 cents a share each month. That higher dividend yield, 15%, gives it an A rating. Only two dividend cuts gives it a B rating over those last five years. That does still mean, though, it did drop the dividend by about 7.8% annualized over that period. So some dividend cut there or dividend decline there over that five years. That is a grade rating of C for dividend growth and a loss of just 0.7%. So as far as M rates, this has held up very well. Loss of just 0.7% a year over the last five years. So again, AGNC is one of my favorite M REITs, mortgage REITs, and just comparing these stats, you see why. It hasn't been totally immune from that interest rate chaos in the mortgage market and has been hit there, that negative, that negative total return over the last five years, but it has managed much better than a lot of its competitors. You still get that 15% dividend yield that, that can only have been cut twice in the last five years, and, and I think much better upside appreciation in this stock in the future. We're approaching number one in our monthly dividend stocks. Next up here, Stag Industrial, ticker STAG, with its 4% dividend yield, one of the, actually the lowest in the list. But if you scroll here through the dividend history, you'll see why it is ranked a little bit higher than many of the other stocks, growing the dividend consistently from 11.8 cents per share there in 2018, growing it consistently each year now to 12.3 cents per share dividend paid every month here in 2023. So here in these last four stocks, you're gonna see not only no dividend cuts, but dividend growth in many of these stocks. You have Stag Industrial, 4% dividend yield, does give it a D rating, very low dividend yield, one of the lowest in our list, but zero dividend cuts over the last five years. That supports it a little bit with an A rating there for consistency, 0.8% dividend growth over the last five years annualized. So that is not much dividend growth, but it is growth compared to a lot of these other stocks, stocks that have cut their dividend. Gives it a B rating. If you had invested five years ago in Stag Industrial, you would have made 11.6% a year on this stock. So that is a B rating. Wyatt is the fourth highest on our list. So Stag Industrial was everyone's favorite REIT during the pandemic, okay, with e-commerce booming and, and all those online orders needing to be stored somewhere, warehoused somewhere. The company's industrial properties, warehouse spaces were seeing a huge bump in valuation. And that's worn off a little bit post-pandemic, but the longer-term e-commerce trend should really support and continue to benefit this company. It's not a high yield, but it is consistent and it is consistently growing. Our top three monthly dividend stocks are next, all three with positive dividend growth, positive total returns over the last five years. But now I wanna show you how I graded and ranked each of these. And to get that total return on investment, I went back to Yahoo Finance to that historical data tab. Here I set the time period again to five years, but I left this to show historical prices, then clicked monthly. Now the column you wanna watch here is this adjusted close. This shows the stock price adjusted for any splits or dividends. So it's a total return accounting for dividends collected. We see right now Apple Hospitality, ticker APLE, here is about $16.15 per $16.15 a share. If we scroll all the way down here, we can see that adjusted for dividends, the price change over this five years, the shares were $13.17 in October of 2018. So here, if we take the current stock price right around $16.15, divide by the adjusted price of that $13.17 per share, that's the price we would have paid five years ago accounting for dividends collected, we get a 1.2262, okay? But remember, that's five years. So we tap that X to the Y button and 0.2 again, 
we get that annual return minus the one. That's 4.16%. That means with dividends, investing in these shares of Apple Hospitality five years ago, we would have made an annual return of 4.16% each year over the last five. Now, to grade each category, I took the average of each column. So first, I took the average of all the dividend yields, yield of 9.5% across all 20 stocks. Then I found the standard deviation, which is just how much difference there is in the group from that average. I know most of you are tired of the math here, so I'm gonna be nice here and not go through the actual calculation for standard deviation, but I gave all the A's to the stocks with two standard deviations above that average, uh, B's to the ones with just one standard deviation, then all the average stocks, so all the stocks with the average dividend yield, the consistency, the dividend growth, all those with those around those averages got a C rating or a C grade. Then D's and F's to the ones that yield in one or two standard deviations below the average. Nerd power. So I did that to grade each stock for each measure in the column. And I bet you thought I was just pulling these grades out of my ass. From there, I gave each stock a score for each letter grade. So five points for A, all the way down to one point for each F added up the total scores and ranked all 20 monthly dividend stocks. The lowest score was an eight for SL Green, which had two C's and two F's. <laughs> all the way up to our top stock with 17 points. Into the top three here with Gladstone Land Corporation, ticker L-A-N-D. It's a dividend yield of 3.7%, the lowest on our list. But if you look at the dividend history, you see no cuts and only dividend growth. Here starting in 2018, 4.4 cents per share dividend there, up to 4.5, 4.6 cents per dividend, or 4.6 cents per share dividend here in 2023. That and the total return is enough to rank this third on our list. 3.7% dividend yield, not great. Got a D grade for dividend yield against a lot of these other very high dividend yield stocks, but zero cuts. 0.9% growth over the last five years, 0.9% dividend yield growth annualized basis over the last five years, gives it a B grade rating there, and 7.3% total return annualized over the last five years. So you would have made 7.3% return a year over the last five years on this grade. That's enough for a B rating. Now land is a great way to get that exposure to farmland without having to pay the fees that you see on some of those other private marketplace sites. Most investors have little or no exposure to farmland because, because of those higher purchase price and, and fees, but it's a great property type to really diversify your real estate portfolio. Everybody's favorite monthly dividend stock, Realty Income, ticker O, made second on our list. Dividend yield of 5.5, almost 5.6% dividend yield here. And you know Realty Income is known for those dividend increases. So if we scroll down, it was paying just over 21 cents per share dividend there in 2018. It has grown that to 25.6 cents per share dividend here in 2023. You get that 25.6 cents per share every single month with Realty Income. Here we see that 5.5% dividend yield gives it a grade of C, just right around the average yield for these stocks. Zero dividend cuts though, and 3.6% dividend growth over the last five years annualized. That does give it an A rating and supports this stock into that second place position. Only a 3.2% total return annualized over the last five years. That is only just above this, just around the average return for these stocks on a total return basis. So not a great total return, but very consistently uh, consistent cash flow growth for this company. Again, Realty Income is everyone's favorite dividend stock, number two on our list, 122 consecutive dividend increases. And I've got to say, I'm surprised it was actually so high up on the list. I mean, that dividend is good, but it's not great. And the annual return here has suffered over the last five years, just 3.2% return over the last five years. But that dividend growth and consist consistency is what helped it here. And the number one monthly dividend stock, Main Street Capital Corporation, ticker MAIN, is gonna pay a 7% dividend yield here. Looking through the dividend history, you can see it started there 2018 at 19.5 cents per share dividend, has consistently increased that each year, now paying 23 cents per share dividend. That dividend yield of 7%, still just a grade rating of C, right around the average for our dividend yields, not high, not low. Dividend cuts zero and 3.4% annualized dividend growth. So over that five years, it's grown it by an average of 3.4% a year. That's good enough for an A grade rating for each of those categories. Total return though, 9.4% a year over the last five years. That gives it a B in that, in that group. And the number one monthly dividend stock with a 9.4% annualized total return. Main Street Capital is by far my favorite business development corporation, or BDC, and it shows you just how well the company is run when it's number one on this list and no other BDC even came close. 
It's got a solid dividend yield along with consistency and growth. There's a lot to like in this stock. Get your fast five minute guide to analyze any stock free with the link below and know exactly what you need to look for in a stock or click on the video to the right to see every dividend stock in my portfolio ranked from best to worst. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.